The following video is sponsored by InstantMaddenCoins.com. The only place to get Madden coins instantly on every console and platform is InstantMaddenCoins.com. Use code CLICKWID at checkout for a 10% discount. Hey, what is going on, guys? Clickwood here back again, bringing you guys another NFL 2017 season schedule prediction for a team. Today, guys, we are taking a look at the New England Patriots, the defending Super Bowl champions, of course. And guys, the previous one that we did before this was for the Kansas City Chiefs. So if you are interested in that, I will leave a link to that down in the description below. There's also going to be a playlist and various different things like that. So you guys can go check those out if you're interested in seeing other teams or other conferences, various different things like that. So uh, if this is the first time that you've seen one of these videos, basically what I'm going to do is go through every single game that the New England Patriots are going to have this regular season and predict a win or a loss. And I'll give you a couple of reasons why for each game as well. So uh, if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure that you drop a like on them. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you are new. And guys, I want to hear from you as well. Let me know in the comments section below if you agree with me or disagree with me on any of these games. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of disagreement. But hey, you know, that's just the way that it is, man. So uh, let me know again in the comment section below what you guys think of these videos. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, drop a like on them as well. So with that said, let's hop into the first set of games, guys. You see it there across the top line, weeks one through weeks four. We're going to start it off with those games. And you see in week one, we've already talked about this one with the Kansas City Chiefs again. So if you want some more in-depth analysis about this game, you can go check that video out where I talked about each and every Chiefs game. But I do have the Patriots getting the win here in week one. The Patriots have actually won 10 straight games stemming back to week 11 of the 2016 season. Obviously, that also includes the Super Bowl. Kansas City is a tough opponent, but the Patriots are always excellent in week one. They've got a lot of time to prepare for this game, obviously, and they're kind of the best at game planning. So uh, you have to give New England the edge here in week one, starting it off 1-0, and heading into week two, where they will actually head down south to New Orleans to play a New Orleans Saints team that finished 7-9 and for the third straight season this past year. But they're always a difficult opponent at home. New Orleans is usually pretty trash on the road, to be completely honest, but they have one of the better offenses in the league. They're very good at home, but they are going to be missing one of their best players from last year, and that's Brandon Cooks, who will actually now be lined up on the other sideline playing for the Patriots. This could be one of the highest scoring games of the entire season for any team, but I've got to go with New England. I would not be surprised if New Orleans keeps it interesting here and has some big plays and even has the lead potentially going into the half. I just think that New England will be able to close it out in the end and head off starting at 2-0 to go into week three where they will be playing the Houston Texans who are quietly one of the teams, in my opinion, that has an actual shot of knocking off the Patriots in the AFC if and only if they can get anything out of their quarterback position they're going to have Tom Savage most likely starting this game. And honestly, well, he gives the team more security early in the season, kind of like the, the little nookie blankie that is Tom Savage, I guess. I don't know. I, I don't know how you could be that happy about Tom Savage being your quarterback, but he lacks the high-end potential of a Deshaun Watson. And I'm just not sure why they don't give him the opportunity right away, to be completely honest with you. I get that there's the history where you want to sit these guys and let them learn from the sidelines, but they're never going to learn if they're not on the field. I don't really think anybody believes Tom Savage is the next great franchise quarterback, so I'm not really sure what the Texans are waiting for, to be honest with you. He's not going to lead them to a Super Bowl. And to be honest with you, the Patriots should be able to exploit the fact that this team just doesn't have a super high-end offense right now. I mean, getting enough points on the board to get a W against New England is going to be very, very difficult for Houston. Don't be surprised if J.J. Watt, Jadavion Clowney, and the Texans' defense is able to, to disrupt the Patriots' offense, though. I mean, this is a team that is very, 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 very good at getting after the quarterback. They were great last year at getting after the quarterback, and that was without maybe the best pass rusher of this generation. So if J.J. Watt's back and he's healthy, this team is going to be very, very difficult. It is worth noting that the Patriots smashed the Texans when these teams played in week three of the 2016 season, 27-0, and then they did it again in the playoffs, 34-16. I think New England's got to get the win here, even though it is going to be a little bit more, I, I think it'll be a little closer than those games were, to be honest with you, but for the most part, I still think it's going to be New England walking away with the W here, and I don't really think it's going to be 
overly difficult for them to get the job done. Their offense is just so much better. So let's move on now to week four where they're going to be playing the Carolina Panthers. And on paper, this one could looks like it could potentially get out of control pretty quickly. The Patriots at home against a secondary that looked terrible last year after losing Josh Norman. I mean, Carolina has attempted to make some improvements on defense, but they added pretty much just aged players who used to play for Carolina back in the day in their prime. They added Julius Peppers and Captain Munerlin. And honestly, I don't really see how anybody could be very excited about those additions. Granted, Julius Peppers is one of my favorite defensive players of all time, but he's way past his prime at this point. Cam Newton always gives the Panthers a chance to win, but to me, it just seems like he's the kind of player that Bill Belichick just thrives on game planning against, and I honestly think the Patriots are going to pretty much walk away with this one relatively easily. This could be one of those games where Christian McCaffrey has a nice day for fantasy purposes, but I don't really see a whole lot as far as Carolina's chance to actually win this one in New England. That is going to be pretty darn tough. So I think the Patriots are going to start the season off 4-0. I don't really think it's going to be too difficult for them to get to that point. So let's move on to the next set of games. Week 5, this is probably their first big challenge in my opinion. This is going on the road against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, one of the younger teams in the league. And the Buccaneers honestly look poised to take a big step forward in 2017. They could do that with a statement win over the Patriots here in Week 5. Tampa Bay will also have Doug Martin back by this game, which is something to be paying attention to. Martin is slept on, in my opinion, because of injuries and now a performance-enhancing drug suspension, but he's quietly one of the more talented running backs in the league. I expect this one to be a shootout, but if you're looking for who's more likely to make the mistake between Tom Brady and Jameis Winston, I think the answer seems pretty obvious. Brady turned the ball over just two times in the entire 2016 regular season. Now, granted, he only did play 12 games, but still, only two turnovers in 12 games. Jameis Winston turned the ball over 24 times by himself. So, yeah, I got to go with New England in this one as well. It is going to be a tough game on the road. Tampa Bay is a good team, but I still got to go with New England. Week 6 at the New York Jets. Yeah, the Jets will be at home for this one. But I still think this is going to be an absolute slaughter. I mean, the Patriots crushed the Jets the last time these teams played. 41 to 3 was the last score that of the between these two teams. Now, granted, that one was in New England, but still. The Jets have arguably gotten worse this offseason, and you could make the you could honestly make the case that this is the worst team in the league. So yeah, they're at home, but I just don't see any way that New England doesn't just walk in there and just destroy them. The only chance that the Jets have is if Tom Brady somehow is out this game or something like that, in my opinion. Other than that, I just do not see it happening for them. So let's move on to week seven. All eyes will be on this game. This is maybe the premier game of the entire football season this year, at least on paper, heading into the season. A Super Bowl 51 rematch, Brady versus Ryan. The Falcons, though, will be without offensive coordinator Kyle Shanahan, who is now coaching the 49ers, and this time it won't be on a new on a neutral field. This time it's going to be in New England, in Foxborough. Now, the Falcons certainly have the firepower to win this one. We've seen their offense. They can definitely put up points, and if it was in Atlanta, I'd be seriously tempted to give this one to the Falcons, but I think New England is able to get the job done. I think they squeak by in a close one, maybe even another late game comeback by the Patriots. I mean, this is just a team that has everything clicking. Their defense is pretty good. Their offense is obviously great. They have some playmakers. Really, everything is going for them. And again, this game is going to be at home, which is a huge advantage for New England. They're a great home team. Great home field advantage. It's going to be difficult for Atlanta to go on the road and win in New England. But again, Atlanta is a team that could do it. You never know. So let's move on then to week eight. And week eight against the Los Angeles Chargers. Chargers are going to be coming off three tough games against the Giants, Raiders, and Broncos, and it just does not get any easier here. The Chargers are 1-6 against the Patriots in their past seven games, and that one win came in 2008 when Brady was out with an ACL tear. So yeah, it just has not been good for the Los Angeles Chargers recently against New England. Obviously, things change over time, but the Patriots just seem to have the Chargers number. I think the Patriots will win this one at home and head into their bye with a clean 8-0 record, firmly ahead in their division, 
and with a chance to lock things up with just a couple of more wins as they head into their Week 9 bye. Now, in their Week 9 bye, obviously, they are going to be looking to prepare for what is going to be a very difficult stretch here toward the end of the season. They're going to actually have one of the most brutal stretches of any team as far as road stretches go. They actually, in Week 10, will start what's, in my opinion, like I said, maybe the most brutal stretch of games for any team this year. They will have to go to Denver, then oh, then Oakland, then they're finally home against Miami, and then three straight road games from there. Very, very difficult. And again, it all starts here in Week 10 against the Broncos in Denver. Now, not ne- not all of these opponents are necessarily great, but five of the next six on the road, man, that is brutal. Denver is going to be themselves coming off a three-game road stretch against the Giants, Chiefs, and Eagles. But the Broncos' defense is certainly built to cause a team like the Patriots problems. Unfortunately, their offense is simply not the type of offense that can match the firepower that New England has. Trevor Simeon has shown himself to be to at least be competent, but he and the Broncos also only scored three points at home when these teams played in 2016. Now, I expect this to be one of the Patriots' lowest scoring games of the year. But if they reach even 20 points, I think they'll get the win, and I do expect that to happen. I am giving them the win here in Denver. So the Patriots now 9-0 head against the Oakland Raiders. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the Patriots are actually going to get a little bit of a break here. They'll still be on the road against a tough team, but this game is actually going to be played in Mexico City, not Oakland. And I think it's also one of the more interesting games on the Patriots' schedule. A lot of people are really expecting the Raiders to make a run at the AFC Championship this season, and they've got all the potential in the world on offense, especially with that offensive line, but their defense, aside from a nice pass rush, is pretty bad, to be completely honest, so look for the Patriots to utilize their running backs and short yardage wide receivers, as well as Rob Gronkowski, to get the ball out quickly and negate Khalil Mack's pass rush. And honestly, if this game was in New England, I'd be really, really, really tempted to give this game to the Raiders. But on a neutral field, I think even things just kind of even themselves out a little bit more. So I am going to give New England another win here. That will bring them to 10-0 as they go up against the Miami Dolphins back at home in Foxborough once again, week 12. Now, this is going to be the first of two encounters with the Dolphins in the span of three weeks. Miami is going to be coming off their bye here in week 12, which kind of makes things interesting. But it would be more interesting if this game was in Miami, in my opinion. Thankfully for the Patriots, this game is going to be in Foxborough, where they haven't lost to Miami since 2008, which was, again, the year that Brady missed missed that game with an ACL tear. So makes sense, obviously. But Brady has, again, had this team's number for a very, very long time. Jay Cutler himself, who is expected to be the Dolphins quarterback, and we'll see if he still is by week 12. But if he is, he has never beaten the Patriots. I don't expect that to change. I do think that the Patriots are going to walk away with the win here and finish off the first three chunks, I guess we'll call it, of their schedule at 11-0. So that means that they head into week 13 at Buffalo, and you've got all that media hoopla coming in. You've got all the people in the media talking about, can the Patriots do it? Can they run the table? And they've got that shiny 11-0 record, but they still have four division matchups remaining, the first of which happens in Week 13 when they go on the road to play the Bills. Now, this could be the first real potentially bad weather game of the year for the Patriots, and New England doesn't play too poorly in bad weather, thankfully, but the elements certainly don't hurt a team like Buffalo who wants to win by running the ball and playing good defense. The Bills actually shut the Patriots out in week four four of the 2016 season, so do not count them out in this game. I know it sounds crazy to say, but I really think that all the media attention that's going to be coming the Patriots' way and talking about them being undefeated could cause some added pressure. The Bills are definitely not a great team, but they're the kind of team that can win a dirty, ugly game at home. So I think there's a really good chance that the Patriots lose their first game of the season in this game, and I actually, crazily enough, am going to predict that the Buffalo Bills are the first team to beat New England this season. So that means that in Week 14, New England heads back against the Dolphins, this time in Miami, coming off a loss, and you know the Patriots are going to be looking to make a statement and reassert themselves as the cream of the crop here in the AFC. But it won't be easy going on the road against a division opponent, but it'll be one that they just saw two weeks ago. 
in the Dolphins. And I, I think that Belichick is going to have a good game plan. He's going to know what the Dolphins want to do. And I think he's going to have a pretty good game plan heading into this one. Miami actually beat New England when these teams played in Miami in 2016, but they lost the second game and then were absolutely trounced in the playoffs, 35-14 to by the Patriots. So they went 1-2 and two against New England last year. I think there's a chance that they win this game. I mean, they're definitely capable of doing, doing so, but I think it's going to be tough to stop New England. They're going to be looking to secure the AFC East and maybe even already a first-round bye in the playoffs by this point, depending on how things look in the rest of the, the conference. But man... New England is going to be really, really looking to get back. If they do lose to Buffalo, they're going to be looking for this W in this one. And I think Miami is just going to be that sacrificial lamb, unfortunately, here in week 14. So in week 15, the the Patriots are going to be back on the road again. This time, two of the biggest powerhouses in the AFC. My opinion, the two best teams heading into the season, at least, in the AFC. That is the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New England Patriots. Obviously, the Patriots will have played four road games in their previous five contests. And this one looks like a very dangerous game on paper. Now, the Patriots did take care of business twice against the Steelers in 2016, including a win in Pittsburgh during the regular season. They also won fairly easily when these teams played in the playoffs. But the Steelers just seem like a worn down team at that point. I mean, they they were not the explosive offense that they were earlier in the year. Big Ben looked weak and, um, you know, really everybody on the offense looked like they were struggling a little bit to, to stay healthy and, and contribute. So I think that at this point, if the Steelers are able to stay healthy, it's going to be a little bit of a different story. They'll also have Martavis Bryant back on the field, hopefully. I mean, they definitely he's definitely been reinstated. So barring injury, he should be out there. And Pittsburgh should be one of the NFL's best offenses this season and one of the, honestly, the few teams that can actually match New England with firepower and stay score for score with them. The Patriots having already locked up their division at this point, most likely, and Pittsburgh needing to rattle off a win or two to actually secure their own playoff spot. This looks like a potential upset to me for the Steelers, and I'm going to go ahead and say that it's going to be the second loss in three weeks for the Patriots. So that means that they are now 12-2 and two heading into the final two weeks of the season. They've got two more division games remaining, one against the Buffalo Bills, who they actually lost their first game against. And yeah, I mean, that's the team that stole their undefeated season back in week 13. So look for the Patriots to come and look to bounce back with a vengeance when they get this rematch here in week 16. The Patriots will be back at home, and if they haven't already locked up that first round by in the playoffs yet, in my opinion, they will do that in this game. They will win this one fairly convincingly after struggling in the first one in Buffalo. I think that they're able to get the job done in the second game in New England. And that leads to a Week 17 game against the Jets, a home game against maybe the worst team in the league that will be far out of playoff contention at this point. Seems like an easy victory for a big team like New England, but... As we've seen in the past, that isn't always necessarily the case. The Patriots will likely only play their starters for a series or two, and that may or may not be enough to win the game by itself, but it could very well come down to the Patriots' backups against the Jets' starters. And what's interesting is that I still sadly probably would say that the Patriots' backups might have a good chance of winning against the Jets. So I'm going to go ahead and predict that the Patriots do wrap up their schedule at 14-2, and one of the best teams in the league this season, if not the best in the regular season, the New England Patriots. It's no surprise that I have the team that won the Super Bowl in the previous year having a great regular season. I mean, they're maybe the most impressive team as far as a a legacy goes of this generation of football. And we say it every year, but this could be Tom Brady's final season. I get it. But I also think this might be his best statistical season ever. If you're talking about fantasy, Tom Brady is going to put up ridiculous numbers this year, in my opinion. I don't see any way he doesn't put up 40 or more touchdowns. I mean, this guy is going to be on fire. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. He's going to be without Julian Edelman, but the addition of Brandon Cooks, the healthy return of Gronkowski, the development of those young receivers, the scheme that this team has, this offense just looks nasty, and their defense is highly, highly underrated. I mean, it is a It is very much a top five defense as well. So yeah, the Patriots, in my opinion, best overall team in the AFC. They get the win against a couple of the other juggernauts in the AFC, talking about like the Chiefs, talking about the the Steelers. They do take a a loss to in the regular season, but they do get the win against the Raiders and a couple other good teams as well here in the regular season. So let me know in the comment section below, guys, what you think about this prediction. If you agree, 
agree with me. If you disagree with me on any games, I'm sure there will be a few. But let's talk about it in the comments section. Thanks again, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Drop a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I will be bringing you guys more game or season previews game by game as the, the week goes on. So be sure to stop on back for more of those. Thanks again, guys. And I'll talk to you all again soon.